Alright, so I got my coffee here. I'm ready to code, I'm ready to do some coding with you guys. Today we're going to look at WPF and some C sharp as I've been doing in the last I don't know how many videos we've been doing stuff in WPF, but it's so good to make WPF videos because it's something I use at work right now. So as I'm I'm having questions and I have to look up stuff, I think that's a good idea for a video. Of course I don't work twenty four seven in WPF, I do other stuff, but uh, that's that's not the point, I guess. <laughs> so if you like these kind of videos, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the like while you're down there. I would appreciate it. And today we're going to talk about the dispatch dispatcher timer. And what it does is it's essentially a, a timer that every time it meets the uh, time span that you gave it, it does some kind of action. It raises an event. And what we're going to do is we're going to um, have a date displayed in our WPF. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, I'm going to delete these. We're going to have a date somewhere up here and every second it's going to update that date. So let's go ahead and get going. So I'm just going to have a text block and uh, right now we're just going to give it a name of um, display, oops, display date text block. I guess that should be capital. Oh man, I can't type, I apologize. <laughs> so text, I'm just going to type test so we can see where it's at in the screen. Of course, I'm going to delete that because that's not a date, right? Um, I just want to put test down in the text so I can see, okay, if I change the font size and the weight and all that, what's it going to look like? So let's make that 16 so it's a little bigger for us to see. I always like to make things bold in WPF. Whoops. For some reason or another, it just looks better to me. It's easier to see when necessary. Of course, some, you don't want everything bold because then it looks, you know, a little too much. But for our instance, I like making things bold so it's easier for you to see as well. And I'm trying to zoom in. Let's make this a little smaller, Solution Explorer. And I really don't need this, so that takes up uh, more more space that we can allow for you to see. And I'm trying to zoom in a little bit here, because I, I realize, yeah, it's it's kind of hard to see sometimes in a YouTube video. So we have text um, that I'm going to remove, but just before I do that, make sure everything looks good. Yeah, it looks good. Um, we don't have a width, but if we wanted to, we could, but I'm not going to put any any kind of width. I'm just going to leave it as it is and if we need to change it down the road obviously um, we can go ahead and change it. So I think that's everything we need right now. Uh, let's go ahead and delete some stuff in the code behind. Um, get rid of this. That was from a few videos back I believe. And now we're just going to talk about the dispatch timer. So I believe for this I could be wrong but I think we need to use System.threading for the dispatch timer. Let me get a drink of coffee real quick. I know it's 641, I probably shouldn't be drinking coffee. And it is a Sunday. But here I am. Probably not going to be able to sleep, but that's okay. Uh, so let's go ahead and create a new dispatch timer after we initialize. So what I'm going to do, I uh, I'm looking at code in my other, you know, I, I'm, I, I'm not ashamed to say that I'm pulling up the code in another monitor because I'm never going to remember the syntax, right? Um, so let's create a new dispatch, dispatch, dispatcher, timer. Let's call it timer and let's see what's wrong here. So I'm going to alt period using system.windows.threading. Ah. Okay, it's system.windows.threading. I would have never guessed that. So we can get rid of threading. Timer is going to be equal to new dispatcher timer. And that's all that we need. And now we're going to create an event. Every time it ticks, we're going to make some kind of event occur. All right, we're going to give it a an event handler. So let's say timer.tick. Um, plus equals, so we're adding this, and new event handler. 
And I'm just going to name my um, event handler, I don't know, update time, timer, uh, and then underscore tick. I think that's the conventional um, way to write that out. So, and that there, and then what we need to do is we need to give it some new time span. So how often do we want this event handler to occur? And for us, I'm going to do it every second. So timer dot time span, whoops, or no, dot interval, I'm sorry, dot interval equals new time span. Please ignore all of these <laughs> mistypings. So that goes hour, um, minute, and then second. So I'm doing zero, zero, one for every second this is going to happen. And you're probably wondering what this red squiggly is. It's because we haven't created this event handler yet. We haven't wrote the code for it, which we will do shortly. And then what I'm going to do is just start it after everything's initialized and we created our dispatch timer. It's uh, We're going to have it start. Okay, so now let's go ahead and, whoops, I added a, uh, there we go. So let's go ahead and create, I'm just going to actually copy this as our private void. You can make it public if you really wanted to. I'm not sure why you'd want to do that. Um, but then we need an object and we'll call that sender just like everything else in an event args e. So if you created event handlers from the code, you would see something very similar to this automatically constructed for you, like we did before in, in other videos. So here's where we're going to um, write what's going to happen every time a second passes. What we want to happen is we want this display date text block to update the time. So display date text block dot text, it's going to equal date time dot now dot to string. Create a string because the text has to take in a string. All right. So let's go ahead and see if this is even going to work. And there it is. Now we have a timer with date as of now, and it's it's getting date from my local computer. So if you're out west, I'm east, so if you're out west, um, it's going to say, okay, and hopefully your, your time is set up correctly on your computer, it's going to grab that time um, and know what, what time zone you're in. So now you can see every second it is actually calling this event, and it's updating that text block that we made. So, pretty cool. So we killed two bones, birds, bones. <laughs> wow. Um, I'm not high, I promise you. I just, <laughs> I think I've lost uh, all willpower today. But here I am making a video. We're killing two birds with one stone. We're talking about um, how to run something, I guess. It's a separate thread, or uh, I don't know how you would actually... Um, what you would actually call this. Is it running in a separate thread? Or is it just happening, you know, in the, in the same thread? I'm pretty sure if it were to happen in the same, it would have to happen in the same thread because the XAML was actually only in one thread. Correct me if I'm wrong if you do know. But if you do know, I don't know why you'd be watching this, <laughs> this video, but um, I would appreciate it if you let me know. But anyway, guys, that's what's going on here. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this video and you found it informative and yeah you could probably use this to your potential to make things happen in the background right every so often if you want to refresh data in your WPF every let's say 10 seconds you could do something like this to call some kind of method that refreshes your data and maybe we can do that in the future maybe we can get a SQLite database I don't know how I'd add to it maybe I'd add to it in Python have it continuously add to it, and then every five seconds update it in WPF. That seems like a lot of work for a video, but I'll do it for you guys. I'm not scared. <laughs> but let me know what you guys think if you enjoyed this video, if you want to see what I just mentioned in a video. That would be kind of cool. Yeah, let me know. Um, but that's all for this video. 
Hopefully you guys uh, you know enjoyed, and don't forget to subscribe and like, and I'll see you in the next one.